<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> in politics, nothing happens out of mere coincidence. Everything in politics is normally well planned, well scripted, and executed to achieve a specific political objective. Nothing in politics just happens out of mere coincidence. Uhuru Mugai Kenyatta, the former president of the Republic of Kenya, today tasked Fred Okengo Matiangi and Rafael Tuju to work very closely with the family of the late Professor George Makoha to ensure that he gets a befitting send-off. This is what Polycap Hinga, who works very closely with Uhuru Kenyatta, posted. This is what he posted. That His Excellency Uhuru Kenyatta has directed former cabinet secretaries Dr. Fred Matiangi and Rafael Tuju to form a committee with, ama, with other former cabinet secretaries and work with the family so as to give their colleague in cabinet Professor George Magoha a send up befitting a national icon. Let me go through Pauline Joroge also working with them. Pauline Joroge is also posting almost a similar thing. That His Excellency Uru Kenyatta directs former CS Fred Matiangi to form a committee of other former cabinet secretaries in his cabinet and work with the family of their colleague, the late Professor George Makoha, to ensure that this national hero is given a befitting send-off. In politics, nothing happens out of mere coincidence. Now, earlier, Raila Amolo Diga, because in this video, I want us to look at why Uhuru has directed these cabinet secretaries to work very closely with the family. Earlier, Raila Odinga visited the family of the late Professor George Magoha. And um, he was with the family there. It can't be coincidence, again, that Raila Odinga also went and held a meeting with the family. Why is this message by Uhuru Mugai Kenyatta significant? If you want to understand the significance of this meeting, let us go to what Mugotio member of parliament, my friend Kiborek Ruben has posted, that remind Uhuru to stop living in the past. He actually shared the post by Pauline Joroge, that remind Uhuru to stop living in the past. His president is William Ruto, just in case I miss how. So I don't know why this issue is giving Kenya Kwanza problem, but the fact of the matter is that Uhuru is keen on achieving objectives, specific objectives, by making this move. Let us go back a bit. When Uhuru Kenyatta fell out with uh, William Ruto, it became very difficult for him to fire his cabinet. The first specialty was none other than Rashid Echesa. Rashid was a very close ally of William Samoe Arap Ruto. Then, from nowhere, Uhuru Kenyatta picked Professor George Mahoha to this cabinet. And just yesterday, Mahoha just died like that. And Kenyans have been, what really happened? And Mutai Nguni made some interesting observation. And that's why I'm telling you, this particular post by Uhuru Kenyatta, this particular direct directive by Uhuru Kenyatta is significant. I'm not going to do editing. I just want to post this. But this is what Professor Nguni said. That I remember Professor George Magoha during COVID at State House. He arrived with a box full of documents. He wanted more funds to expand schools. He was a giant with a kind soul. He did not die of a heart attack. He died of a heartbreak. Especially after KC, KCC result. How sad. You see, there are people who believe in this country. And uh, today I was in uh, some bunge here in Kisumu, and I was shocked at the thinking. There are people who believe very strongly that Magoha 
died because of two things. The first thing is that he worked tirelessly for the CBC to be implemented. Then when William Ruto took over, the first thing he did was to dismantle and destroy the CBC. And because of that, most people feel that Magoha was really disturbed by the fact that all his efforts just went like that. Then the story which the people at Bunge were also saying is that Magoha actually died because of the failures or the return of exam cheating. But those are just rumors. Let us focus on why Uhuru would appoint members of his cabinet to work with the family. Because Magoha is actually a national hero in this country. He's a leader and he has died. And therefore, you would expect the government to play a role. And who is the government? The government is actually William Ruto and his current government. But why would then Uhuru Kenyatta decide to specifically appoint his former cabinet? Before we get into all those details, in case you're watching this channel up to this stage, for the first time, I want you to take just a second or two Press that subscribe button so that next time we produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. And to the subscribers, I want to continue thanking you guys for your continued support. Because without that support, this channel cannot be where it is now. Let us get back to the main issue. Why do you think Uhuru decided in his wisdom to form this committee? Number one, I think there is a very strong feeling within Uhuru Kenyatta's former cabinet, that William Ruto's government is mistreating them and does not really recognize them and re <clears throat> does not really recognize them and even the efforts they made. You see, if you look at William Ruto and the way he has operated since he took over, almost all policies, everything Uru Kenyatta did, he has reversed. So how do you, if you are a cabinet minister and everything you worked for, for five years. You are the president and you had your cabinet. They worked for you and everything they did, you reversed. Rutas reversed almost everything Uhuru did with the cabinet. So they feel that they are being mistreated. They are not recognized. And because they feel that they are being recognized, that's why Uhuru has chosen those two people. Fred Matiani, how do you think, if, to, if for God forbid, Matiani were to die today? If God forbid, Matiani were to die today, what kind of condolence do you think William Ruto would send? What about Peter Munya or Reverend Raphael to you? And these are people who serve this country at the cabinet level. So Uhuru is just reminding this guy that you don't recognize us. So I'm appointing one of my loyal members. Matiangi was the most powerful individual in Uru Kenyatta's government. William Ruto and his team made him their worst enemy. So as we speak, Uhuru is doing this just to send a message. Then he went and picked Rafael Tuju also to work with Matiangi. Why Rafael Tuju? Again, your guess is as good as mine. So for me, that's number one that they are not recognized and therefore they want to take charge of their colleague. Number two, if you ask me, is that Uhuru and Raila are trying to take charge of this funeral. Why do you think they want to take charge? And someone just asked me whether Ruto can do something. Yes, Ruto can do something. As the president of the, of the Republic of Kenya, he can come tomorrow and announce that the government is taking everything, is taking charge of that funeral. Then what will Raila and Uru do? That's the other question. He can decide and say, the government is taking charge of everything because Uhuru is advising his cabinet to form a committee to ensure that he gets a befitting funeral. The fact is, the moment Uru Kenyatta appointed Magoha to his cabinet, you can't divorce them. 
So it means even if Ruto were to form a committee as the president, then that committee will have to include members of Uru Kenyatta's cabinet. Then Ruto can pick someone like uh, Adam, who is already working with him. But Ruto is telling him, I'm sticking with these guys. So for me, number two, I think that Uhuru and Raila are actually trying to take charge. Raila visited the family. Uhuru is advising the family to take charge. Which means there is something they know which probably we don't know. There are certain things Magoha probably told the family which some of us might not know. Number three, in my view, these guys are also sending, Uhuru is sending a coded message to the country about his feeling. How he has been mistreated by this government. How his people have been mistreated. Of course, the cabinet can offer Uru's money. He is the richest person in the country. Raila Odinga, listen, they have supporters. If they want to offer this guy the best funeral, they can do that. Yeah, but it's all about a message. He's sending a coded message to the country. The moment he announced that, it became a headline. Why? Because it's clearly a coded message. Number five, I also tend to think that Uhuru is just trying to extend his love to Magoha. That is this one of the cabinet he really entrusted with the job. And he doesn't want to take any chance. You can't expect Uhuru to talk to Ruto when they're not in talking terms and ask Ruto to form a committee to offer a befitting send off because on a, on that particular day when the, the the burial will take place, the former colleagues will have to speak. Uru Kenyatta will have to speak, and Uru Kenyatta is telling them that I'm attending this funeral. And lastly, it's about the fact that Ruto does not recognize the contribution of the former cabinet. So Uru is just like, okay, we will do it. I don't know what to think. That's my take. The thing is, Uru, Ruto does not recognize the former, the, the, the former cabinet. So these cabinet are telling him, if you don't recognize when we are alive, there is no need recognizing us when we are. <laughs> Thank you guys and may you have a good day. Bye-bye.